The Fender Pro Junior, small, compact, 15 watts, fairly affordable for a Fender amp. Is this thing the business? Or uh, is it not? Let's see after this intro. Welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karilan, and it's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. Today I'm taking a look at the Fender Pro Junior Lacquered Tweed, which goes for 598 euros here in Europe, which is roughly $650, but I don't know what it goes for in the States. You can let me know in the comments. This thing is really simple, so even I can understand it. Yes, it's not a Marshall code. <laughs> it has a 10 inch Jensen speaker, uh, Jensen if you prefer, and uh, that's basically it. 15 watts of power, no extra connections, nothing like that. Just two controls, uh, volume and tone. And the volume goes to 12. That's like more than the Marshall Nigel Tufnell used. <laughs> so it's one louder. <laughs> yes, indeed. So uh, today I'm going to be trying it out with a Strat and also with a Les Paul and with an overdrive pedal and I'll also try also try, also try uh, a delay. It doesn't have a loop, so we'll see what it thinks of a delay. And that's basically it. Uh, let's start off by having tone halfway and uh, yeah, let's open the volume and see what happens. Yes, it sounds very Fendery. Um, forgot to say, the Strat I'm using is a custom mahogany Strat with Seymour Duncan YGM Fury pickups. These are slightly darker than the kind of stock pickups you'd find on your regular Fender Stratocaster. Okay, let's uh, add some volume. So now I have volume on nine o'clock. <laughs> Okay, so, so far, because there's no breakup going on, um, it, the delay is just fine without the loop. Let's add volume and see when we get breakup and then we'll try the tone knob and overdrive pedals and all that. Uh, so that was at nine o'clock with the volume. Let's add a bit of volume. This is somewhere between 10 and 11 o'clock. <laughs> Okay, so volume differences will be lost on YouTube because I have a compressor there that uh, kind of keeps everything with, from distorting. Uh, 
That's the thing with tube amps. When you add level, the speech mic would go crazy and all that. And I also have one for the mic here, just to keep volumes kind of so that they don't go crazy. Uh, but you didn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of difference volume wise between the two settings. <laughs> The sound just got fuller uh, and we're approaching breakup so let's see halfway even more volume a bit to get rid of the hiss. Uh, the sound gets better, it gets a bit, uh, uh, there's a bit of breakup going on, but then again when you get more breakup uh, the delay starts sounding weird to me, so you can't really use it at maximum volumes with delay. Let's see uh, how much this does. Let's turn up to three o'clock. <laughs> Okay, so at full volume the delay doesn't really work, but uh, if you're playing quieter, it does work. And then you can use an overdrive pedal to uh, add a bit of distortion. Okay, so I have the Strymon Riverside here with a moderate gain setting applied. Um, let's ditch that for a while and see what the tone knob does. And the delay as well. Here's tone all the way rolled back.
<laughs> okay, let's add more overdrive. <laughs> impressions let's drop tone a bit it's fairly loud so if you plan on using this at home uh, might not be a good idea unless you play it really quietly <laughs> It's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. So, um, you can get it very quiet. Uh, let's change guitars. I'll try the Les Paul. Okay, so now I have uh, a Les Paul with P90s. Let's see what this thing sounds like. <laughs> This is the amp, very quiet. Let's add a bit of volume. Now it's halfway. This is with tone halfway, by the way. Turn the wrong volume knob because I'm not used to less pulse. <laughs> Let's max out the volume on the fender.
Okay, so um, it only has two knobs. Uh, that's basically it. You can try it with different guitars, different overdrive pedals. Um, for me, uh, I got a very good picture of what this amp does. And uh, it's not for me. I mean, it's not my type of amp. But the only real criticism I have of it is, uh, and this is very tiny, that's what she said, um, <laughs> is that it doesn't have uh, an external speaker out, so you could use it with a different, uh, with a cab, for instance, in the studio, which would be nice. Um, I would also like a loop, but small details. I mean, I can really see why someone would like this, because it does sound very good. It's just not my type of amp. Um, very good. For 600 euros, six and a half hundred dollars, or whatever it goes for in the States, it's not bad. Um, it does sound very good. Then again, you can get basically the same types of features or more features for much less money. Uh, like with the Harley Benson uh, 215. Now, I don't know about reliability. This might be more reliable. You never know. So yeah, I can see why people like this and it looks like a Fender and it, it has that whole thing going. So yeah, it is a, a good sounding amp. For me, mm, no, but that's basically it. If you want to watch more of my amp reviews, there's a playlist here somewhere. Um, you can also check out some of my music. Hey, like the video if you liked it. If you didn't, well, you've probably gone already. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification thing. Join me on Patreon because you get all of my music for free there. If you want it for free, you don't have to pay. And uh, yeah, other than that, you get a bunch of exclusives as well. And uh, comment, let me know what you thought. And I hope to see you in another video. Have a nice day. Take care. Goodbye.